because I don't believe this is a far right country, uh, you know, I don't think the country is as conservative as they are, um, I think that this is ultimately a path for the Republican Party that won't work. This is At Brookings, a weekly in-depth look at issues behind the news. This week, the Tea Party and its influence on American politics. The Tea Party movement stormed into American politics in 2010, touting a platform of smaller government, individual freedoms, and greater personal responsibility. Its message has moved many Republicans farther to the right and changed the national debate. Clearly, a force in the upcoming 2012 elections, the Tea Party continues to push a conservative agenda. Senior fellow E.J. Dion takes a closer look. E.J., the Tea Party represents a minority point of view according to some recent polls, yet in recent months it has dictated much of the national dialogue. How is this possible? People really sympathize with the Tea Party constitute somewhere between 10, 11 and maybe 20 percent of the country. Um, that's a lot of Americans, and when uh, they're, but they're a minority. Um, when uh, one side of politics is more activated than another side, uh, 10 or 20 percent can seem like 30 or 40 uh, percent. That's partly what happened in 2010. In, you know, in 2006 and 2008, the center and the left were more mobilized. Uh, in 2010, uh, the right and right center uh, were more uh, mobilized. Secondly. Um, they have outsized power because they have almost a kind of veto power inside the Republican Party. Um, and that what you're seeing in the Congress is that even more moderate conservatives are reluctant to buck the Tea Party uh, because in primaries where you're talking about a sliver of the electorate, you're talking about a, a sliver of the whole Republican electorate, which itself is a minority of the country, they can exercise enormous power. Well, let's apply that same question to the electorate. If the Tea Party isn't really the party of choice or the philosophy of choice, how is it that the, that the Tea Party has influenced the vote so much? A lot of voters don't vote on ide ideological issues. They vote on their sense of is the country in good shape or is it in bad shape? Uh, when Ronald Reagan got reelected by a landslide uh, in 1984, it wasn't because absolutely every American who voted for him had concluded that they were conservative and believed everything Reagan believed. They just looked around and said the country's in better shape in 1984 than it was in 1980. Uh, and I give Reagan credit for that. And they voted for Reagan. I'm not discounting that at all. I mean, they, it was, you remember his great election campaign, It's Morning in America. That really appealed to the voter who judges things by how are things going? How am I doing? How is my family, my community doing? So then it's all about the message. And the Tea Party apparently has the right one. In large parts of the country, the economy has not recovered from uh, the uh, crash of uh, 2008. Um, and so there will be a lot of voters uh, sort of uh, asking again to go back to Reagan that question, you're better off now than you were four years ago. And, you know, one question will be, do people still blame this on President Bush? The polls show that Bush still takes more of the blame for the mess than President Obama, but the numbers have narrowed. Uh, or can the Republicans turn it around and say, even if you do blame Bush, shouldn't Obama have made things better? Uh, in the last four years. Well, there are some who say that the Tea Party's position is actually a repudiation of government, period. What do you make of that? This is a very old conservative position. You know, some of it goes back uh, to the far right in the 50s uh, and 60s. Uh, some of their ideas come out of the far right in the 50s and 60s. But it's not just far right or extremists. There's always been this strain of republicanism um, going back to the re Republican opposition to the New Deal from conservatives that essentially wanted to bring us back to a period before the Progressive Era and before the New Deal uh, where government didn't provide social insurance, where government didn't regulate as much. Well, can an anti-government sentiment hold up, especially in these hard times? Most Americans, even when they're mad at government, want government to do a fair number of things. My favorite line on this subject comes from, uh, and I use it all the time, is uh, former Senator Bill Cohen, a liberal Republican from Maine who worked for uh, President Clinton. He said, government is the enemy until you need a friend. Uh, and whether you were liberal or conservative or moderate or Tea Party, if you were in the way of a hurricane or a flood or an earthquake uh, or a tornado, uh, 
uh, you really appreciate it when government comes in and helps you rebuild because this was, you know, this came through. It's no fault of your own. And so the rest of us lend a hand to the people who uh, get into trouble that way. Um, you know, most people when they get sick would like to see a doctor. Uh, and while they may have grave doubts, they may be against national health insurance, um, if they're over 65, they're sure happy they have Medicare. And most people, I think, uh, want to protect the water and protect consumer products. And, um, you know, they, they actually count on the government to make sure that the hamburger you buy in the store is not tainted. What role will the Tea Party play in the 2012 elections? All of these candidates uh, on the Republican side have to appeal uh, to a much more conservative Republican Party. Uh, one of my favorite lines is, Ronald Reagan, who once uh, was joking, he said, the problem with my administration is that the right hand doesn't know what the far right hand is doing. Uh, and what you really have are conservatives and really, really, really conservatives uh, sort of clashing uh, against each other. Well, E.J., you've said that you feel the uh, country is on an unsustainable path of really conservative thinking. But you also say that there could be an aha moment for Republicans if 2012 doesn't turn out as they like. What I'd like to see happen is what happened in Britain to the conservative party there, where uh, David Cameron is very conservative. He's making some pretty deep cuts in government. I, I would disagree with some of those cuts if I lived in Britain. Nonetheless, he is fundamentally a moderate sort of figure. Uh, he's somebody who can appeal outside the circle of the right. And I think that ultimately, if they lose this time, a lot of Republicans are going to say, we need a David Cameron moment. They may not say it that way unless they're into British politics, but we need a moment like this. Um, and then I think you're going to see a reassertion of a more moderate brand of uh, conservatism. Um, so that's my hope. And I actually think that would be better for conservatism and better for the country. Stay up to date with the latest research, learn about Brookings events, and search our directory of experts all from your mobile device. To download Brookings for your BlackBerry, Android, iPhone, or iPad, go to brookings.edu mobile.